Greetings everyone, Harry Nick here. How is everyone going? I hope you're all happy and safe and relatively not dealing with the realities of the world right now. Let's finish off having a look at all these new X-Wing points changes for July of 2020. And just chat about the effects on the meta. Now, this video is probably going to be a bit longer than the last one because I'm going to be talking about A, the scum faction, the faction that I fly the most of. So I'm probably going to have the most opinions about this one. Uh, plus, we're looking at the generic upgrades, and we're going to go back and look at some of the other ships throughout the last couple of videos we did, and talk about the effects on those, because with generic upgrades, of course, they work on any faction, especially when we're talking about generic pilots as well. So without any further ado, let's dive into the scum faction and take a look what's going on. First of all, the aggressor assault fighter, um, the IG-2000, it's more commonly referred to as, has had a one-point reduction across the board. Uh, which is good. Now this um, is not the first time this has happened on this platform and it still hasn't got to a stage where we're seeing relevant meta play on this one. So I think FFG are just being a bit cautious with this because obviously um, lists that use IG pilots are better than the sum of their parts and they just got to be careful. They can't sort of uh, gut this by like three points across the board because of course things with IG-88A and uh, IG-88D crew cards, for example, like you get this sort of overflowing, uh, like extra power effect. So I think one more point is correct. Maybe one of these could have gone down by two, but nonetheless, uh, IG-88A is, of course, the most interesting one always with these because it combos very nicely with ships like uh, Guri for Lom. You could put IG-88D crew on like Boba Fett and all those kinds of things. So it's still the most expensive at 66 points, which makes sense. Uh, also, IG-88C is a good one with Boba Fett as well. So 63 points, but Boba Fett's gone up. So, you know, whatever. Um, you can't put IG-88D on Guri or anything like that. So you can't get value out of IG-88C. Nevertheless, very cool looking. I don't think this is going to really um, make any more lists any more viable. I mean, anything with Boba Fett, obviously, which is a big part of the discussion with Scum, isn't going to be um, made uh, any easier to do because Boba Fett's gone up by a point as well. Um, but anything with like a, a Falcon or Four Lom, it just becomes a little, little bit more relevant. Uh, no changes on the wire wing. Moving down to the Falcon. Uh, yes, big point changes across here. Um, reduction of six points on Han and L337. Seven points on Lando. And five points off the generic. Um, the freighter captain is now 41 points. So we're not flying a five of. Probably a good thing. Um, but six points off Han's very relevant here. Um, Han has not seen an insignificant amount of meta play. Not so much these days, but, uh, you know, Initiative 6, a title that sort of gives you three red dice a good amount of the time, it's not irrelevant. Um, it's kind of crazy looking at these kind of stats where back in first edition, you know, big ships were very, very relevant in terms of meta play. Like, it was a real cost to take a big ship. Now it almost feels like a disadvantage. Um, so it's cool. Uh, again, FFG sort of reacting to what's going on. Um, hopefully these see a bit more play because frankly, the meta is heavily dominated by small ships right now. Um, yeah, Han at 48 points. I think that's something worth keeping an eye on, that's for sure. Uh, moving down, no change on the escape craft, Fang Fighter. Fenrir is still more expensive than Vader. I'm not going to say anything. Uh, fire Spray is all the same except for Boba Fett going up by a point. Also relevant on the Fire Spray, the Slave 1 title has gone up as well. Um, up by four points from one point to five points. Now, the two big changes here, obviously, is Boba Fett and Slave 1 um, because they're seeing all the better play right now. And i got to say, um, I, I agree something had to be done. I think the problem, if you're going to sort of assess what's going on with that build is more with Boba Fett. Having said that, I am biased. Um, I often find in my flying, and this is probably not reflective of, of everyone else's, um, that Slave 1 isn't something that's that valuable. However, I will say at one point, there's basically no downside to taking it. And given that it can do something really powerful in certain places, I understand why it has to go up in points. Maybe not five is correct. Like what I'm saying is I think Boba Fett should have bore more the grunt of this points increase. 
maybe like you know two more points on slave one two more points on boba fett that kind of thing that's more what i think is going on here so as it stands boba fett is what uh 14 more points than calf scarlet which is the next most expensive sounds about right to be honest i mean boba fett is way better than calf scarlet in terms of ability and initiative five over initiative four like there's there's a world of difference um I don't think this is wrong by any stretch of the imagination. Um, look, from my point of view, this is not going to change what I do with Boba Fett. Um, I basically only ever took Slave 1 as insurance. I'm probably just not going to take it anymore. Um, I don't care. Um, I'm finding with my own flying that the more I fly Boba Fett, the more I realize that I don't care about upgrades. I have been considering for a long time just flying Boba Fett with nothing on him. And honestly, at one point more, it's basically no downside to trying that. So, yeah. Yeah. Cool, whatever. Um, also, interestingly, Boba Fett is still in hyperspace. Uh, the entire platform is still in hyperspace, which I know a lot of people were sort of hoping would be something that FFG were going to change, but, you yeah, know, whatever. Um, hopefully this point change addresses some of Boba Fett's meta-dominance. No changes on the G1A Starfighter, a two-point reduction on Dace Bonearm and Spice Runner on the Hawk, very similar to what happened on the Rebel Faction. Uh, Palob and Torkoal, of course, the two most relevant pilots on this, so no surprise there that they've kept them the same, similar to what they did with the Rebellion. They um, kept the uh, sort of more relevant pilots the same. Uh, no changes on the Jump Master, no change on the Kiraz Fighter. We have a bunch of reductions on the Lancer class pursuit craft. Again, large base ship. Um, trying to make this thing more relevant. Uh, three points of a Sarge Ventress is very, very interesting. I don't think that this pilot was that far off from being playable. So at 69 points, nice. Um, I think this could be something that is actually worth considering. Um, uh, what was it in first edition? Sort of a Sarge Nim. Nim's not really that relevant now, but like a Sarge Boba now. Um, with a Sarge at 69 points and Boba at 86. There could be something there. Uh, maybe with a third ship or it's going to be tricky, but, you know, something to think about. Also, Ketsu and Sabine down by two points each and the Shadow Pawn Hunter down by one point. Uh, the generics is 55 points. It's not going to open up any doors in terms of flying multiples of these. Um, but you could if you really want to fly three of them. Uh, moving down, no change on the Kimigilla. M1A Starfighter. I still think this is a hair more expensive than it should be, but you know, whatever. Uh, the TIE Fighter is still the same. The Quad Jumper. Okay, now this is interesting. We have Zuvio and Sarko planked down by three points each. That's fine. These guys don't see meta play, but we have a one point reduction on Unka Plat and the Jakku Gunrunner. Right, nice. Nice, nice, nice. Actually, the same point now. Actually, Sarko Plank is the same points, and there's only a one-point investment for Zuvio. Now, um, these pilot abilities and initiative don't meet much on this platform. It's not a nice platform. We can have a tight band, but one point between a Jakku Gunrunner and its best pilot is interesting, to say the least. Um, now, this has seen meta play. It is worth saying, something that has uh, sort of semi-dominated the first or second batch of points... I want to say the first from memory in second edition. Uh, so, yeah. Look, with Boba Fett going up by a point, this going down by a point, maybe this will swing it back in the favor of the Jakku Gunrunner. Uh, who knows? Um, nice. Could be interesting. Uh, moving down, the one-point reduction on Captain Nim. Whatever. Not seeing meta play. Although I do like Captain Nim. I think this sort of frame with a Initiative 5 pilot is not irrelevant. Um, 47 points should be competitive on paper, but we've just not seen much play with this. Interesting to see if that goes any further. No change on the Star Viper. And some point reductions on the YV-666. Two points on Bosk, one point on Lats and the Trandoshan Slaver. Morella Uval, the only pilot to see any sort of relevant meta play on this, has not changed, of course. Um, 51 points down with the Trandoshan Slaver. I don't think it's going to make it that much more relevant, but... Could be in a three of build, I guess. Um, it's a big chunky boy. Yeah, yeah, that's worth having a think about. No changes on the uh, Z95 head on for the scum either. Okay, just having a quick look down at some of our upgrades. Apart from Slave 1, we do have a one point reduction on Bosk. And Bosk is interesting. I especially like this kind of ability when we have uh, gunners on the Jumpmaster. 
I don't think one point's going to change what it does, but it wasn't seeing play before, so hopefully we get a bit of joy on this. No points changes on like Han Solo or Greedo or anything like that. Um, Greedo at one point, I'm still sort of curious as to what we can do with it, especially now that Han Solo is uh, reduced so heavily. Um, this kind of card is better the higher initiative you are. Okay, let's move over to the Separatists now and have a look what's going on. No points changes on the Belbalab or Hyena. On the Nantex, okay, big, 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 big points changes. We have a nine point reduction on Sunfac, four points on Brewer Cret, five on Shurtek, eight points on Gorgle and the Patronarchy Colosseum Ace, and five points on the Stalg. I hate, I hate these, the, the cheap generic. Um, yeah. Very big points reductions, and also a points increase on Ensnare, basically really crunching those points together. Uh, it's all sort of 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, until we get to initiative 5 and 6, where it's 24 and 28. So a little uptick there, but no points increase on initiative 6 pilots. So Sunfac with Ensnare just went down by 9 points across the board, which is not irrelevant. Um, I had a quick check of Metal Wing with this because I thought, hang on, did, wasn't this doing quite well? And it's not even on the lists of like the top 200 pilots on Metal Wing right now. So maybe FFG sort of smacked it too hard with the hammer last time in the last point change. Um, having said that, Metal Wing data is not as relevant now because of the lack of organized play, um, at least not in the official sense. So make of that what you will. Um, having said that, this is probably going to make this relevant again. This is a huge points change, though. Um, I don't think Ensnare is going to be sort of like an auto-add or like an, an auto-meta build anymore, which is a good thing. Uh, also, no point in graphitic deflection for what that's worth. Very good with this platform. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Sunfac, a relevant initiative, 6 ace at 45 points. Cool, cool, cool. We'll see if that leads to anything busted. Uh, Sith Infiltrator, we have a two-point reduction on 066. Cool, I like 066. Kind of like this fun, calculate Sith Infiltrator. Usually all the meta play happens with Maul or Dooku. We've seen sort of like a Dooku plus uh, Vulture Swarms happen. 14-point difference between 066 and Count Dooku. Now, obviously, um, 066 is way less powerful than Dooku, um, but it does open up some more possibilities, possibly. On the Vulture Droid, we have a one-point increase on both of the generics. So now our Trade Federation drone is 20, not 19, making it two points shy of an Academy pilot instead of three points. Um, in terms of what this does for list building, I don't think this really changes a whole heap. I'm not really a Separatist pilot myself, so if this sort of makes the mass Vulture Swarms a little bit harder to deal with, I can understand why FFG might want to do that. I mean, this has always been a very hardship to evaluate because people have a negative perception of this because it just pops. But when you fly this many ships, yes, they are going to just pop. But remember, you have like six more ships on your list. It doesn't matter if you lose a ship in the first round of engagement. Um, people have always been down on this because of their perception. But if you actually watch a lot of the pro players play with vultures, you realize, oh, no, they you know, they lost two vultures, but they took out another ship that was worth more than them combined um, in response. So I do not think that 20 points is necessarily incorrect. I don't think 19 was cheap, cheap. But if we have a quick look over at Metawing, we can actually see that the Trade Federation drone is number 10 out of all parts right now. It's actually not the highest generic. We have the Red Squadron Expert and Zealous Recruit at the time of recording this just above it. Um, yeah, nevertheless, it is sort of a very difficult one to balance. It almost feels like we might need more granularity to sort of balance this perfectly. Now, maybe like 19.5 would be perfect. Not that I think we should do that. I'm just sort of trying to illustrate a point. Moving down, we do have a couple of other upgrades as well. Kraken up by a point, TA-175 up by two points. Yeah, sort of reaction of what's going on in the meta there. Not much to say. Let's have a look at these generic upgrades and talk about this in a bit more in depth. So starting out uh, with our payloads, we have a one point reduction on Conanet, Electro Proton Bomb and Ion Bombs. Um, in terms of what this offers on our generic platforms, yes, we can put these on wire wings. It's not totally irrelevant. Uh, also, if we have a quick look at the Empire, we had 
No point reduction on the generic uh, tie striker. We take a look at the tie bomber. No, no points change there either. Uh, we have one point less on the cutlass. Yeah, I mean, whatever. Uh, it doesn't really feel like there's a heap of relevant platforms that these bombs really help out. All right, and moving down to the gunners. And this is going to be a little bit more relevant when we're talking about those generic pilots. Agile Gunner is now 7, 6, and 5 points respectively for small, medium, and large base ships, um, which is all a points reduction. I don't think that's going to do anything crazy. What's more interesting here is Veteran Turret Gunner is 12, 9, and 7 points respectively for small, medium, and large. Uh, the small base ship has gone up by two points, medium down by one, and large down by three. And I think this is a very deliberate attempt by FFG to make this a much more viable option on large base ships. Um, down by three, especially on things like Han Solo, on the uh, Millennium Falcon for Scum, uh, the Decimator, what else, the Resistance Bomber, all that kind of stuff. That sort of double tapping out the turret stuff is going to be more valuable on ships like that. And it's never really been something that's taken a real hold meta-wise. Um, the only gunner that we have seen uh, see a significant amount of play insofar as the gunners that do like the double tapping stuff um, was Han Solo on the Rebel Faction, which was a combo build, which was quickly errated and chained. So we can now no longer do that. So this is quite relevant because Veteran Turret Gunner, as well as some other ones I've spoken about, but specifically Veteran Turret Gunner is a generic upgrade. So at seven points on a large base ship, uh, that's crazy. It's now cheaper on a, on a large base ship than it is on a small. That's so bizarre, but there you go. That's um, how the meta has shifted. No worries. Moving down to missiles, we have a one point reduction on cluster missiles, ion missiles, and proton rockets. Um, none of which are really seeing all that much play, but they're going to be helpful on some things, I guess. Off the top of my head, T-70X wings is going to be the one that's going to benefit most potentially. RZ-2A wings, perhaps? Um, I don't know. Whatever. Uh, crunching those points a little bit closer together. Moving down, we have some changes on passive sensors. So now, uh, based on initiative, it's 2, 2, 2, 2, 2. Two, four, six for initiative zero through six, respectively. So now it's a little bit more expensive on Vader, which is the one ship that sort of really benefits from this. But it's a lot cheaper on like generic ordnance based ships. Moving down, crack shots gone up by a point. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I still think it's relevant enough on the platforms that want to take it. This is usually the realm of like T seventy X wings, RZ two A wings. Um, it's pretty much an auto add on a lot of those RZ2 builds because you get that bonus talent slot. So now taking up a slot and taking two points instead of one, it feels a bit more like a real cost rather than something you just chuck in. Um, so I got to imagine at two points, those pilots that are taking it are probably going to think a little bit longer and probably make sure if they're going to take it, they're actually going to use it. Uh, saturation salvo dime by a point. Who cares? Moving down to tech, we have a two point reduction on targeting synchronizer, which again is handy in some ordnance based builds, but I mean, what are we talking about here? Like T 70X wings, perhaps with those cheaper missiles? Yeah, it seems all right. I mean, they can't go on a lot of the older ships because I mean, it's tech, it's only for the 30 era ships. So, yeah, <laughs> I mean, whatever. It's great sort of tech no pun intended, for like those ships that want to carry ordnance, but the ships that can take it doesn't really benefit from that kind of build at the moment. So, well, I don't know, could be something there. Here's two points, it's not insignificant. Moving on, torpedoes, reductions by one point on advanced frontal torpedoes, ion torpedoes and plasma torpedoes. So your janky DBS-404 builds is now just a hair cheaper. Um, apart from that, yeah, protons stay at 13 points, which is probably correct. Man, they were cheap when second edition rolled around. Uh, again, we're sort of still talking about a lot of those things we mentioned before. Also, these are usable on all of those generic Y-Wings now, um, which is interesting. But having said that, I don't really think that's as relevant as the turret we're about to chat about. This is really more for like tie bombers and that kind of thing. And I like the way they've sort of fixed or potentially made the Tobama a bit better just through proxy. I like that these are a bit cheaper and also we have a couple of missiles that are a bit cheaper as well and some bombs that are a bit cheaper. So 
Maybe the bomber doesn't need a reduction beyond that point. Plus we do have some points reductions on the type Punisher. So little increments here and there do add up and these builds are actually like losing a lot of points if you go across all the different upgrades. Which of course is what those ships are designed to do. They're not designed to just have, you know, no or just like one or two upgrades. But the most relevant thing I want to chat about here is dorsal turret. I'm down from three points to two points. So um, specifically with some of the cheaper turret platforms like Y-Wings. I actually had a couple of comments, people talking about, hey, this Red Squadron Bomber on the Republic, for example, 29 points, uh, 31 points with a turret. I don't think we're going to want to slap on like veteran turret gunner, but I suppose you can. It's going to go over 40 points if you do that. Um, that still seems pretty competitive. Let's just jump around the different factions. If we go to Scum, uh, 30 points becomes 32 points with a... Now that I have a think about it, we do have that advantage with the BTLB Y-Wing because it's a bit more durable than like the Scum and the Rebel Y-Wing. So that can be flown as a six of if you want to do that. Now, I don't think we're talking the sort of degeneracy of like Thug Life um, from first edition where you have four TLTs, but it has a lot of firepower. Now, nowhere in this list, for example, if we take six of one of these scum, rebel or republic Y-wings, um, is there any sort of like double tapping abilities? You're just relying on guns alone, but six two dice attacks. Um, yeah, it seems okay. Also, I just want to comment a bit more generally. I think Dorsal Turret at even three points was a decent auto include, um, auto issue include on some builds. Like I quite like flying Cavill on the scum faction, for example. Um, you basically need some kind of turret, and at two points, it feels way more competitive than it is at three points, um, and anything you can sort of shave off those builds with those sort of middle-of-the-road Initiative 5 scum ships, for example. But even like your, just what, your average Hawks and that kind of stuff, a lot of them have come down in points as well. Two points feels like it's just a good replacement for a primary attack, but it's not such an investment that you're basically relying on it for example if you're flying a hawk you can still use the primary at the front all this at the side and sort of cover your bases for a pretty modest investment so i quite like dorsal turret at two points i think it really sits in my mind a bit better at two points in terms of just giving players more options encouraging some different kinds of list building at three points it sort of starts to shift into the realm of okay well if i take this i've got to use it um, and that doesn't sort of encourage players to be a bit more versatile. They want to try and uh, gun for certain strategies and that kind of thing. So all in all, pretty happy with all of this. Um, I think FFG have done a good job. I got a comment on one of these first videos, people saying, oh, I'm glad they didn't sort of nerf the high end stuff. They're more letting all the other stuff which aren't seeing play come down in points. And I, I sort of agree with that. Um, unfortunately, it's always a case of you'll have to nerf something because the things that aren't seeing that points reduction sort of are being nerfed in a kind of weird way. Nevertheless, just looking back through these lists once more time, there's nothing I think um, has been super viable will become unviable as a result of these. Um, yeah, a lot of the more, I don't want to say degenerate, but like um, more hyper-efficient stuff like Boba Fett, some of like the A-Wing and X-Wing parts, all, all that kind of stuff. I've only seen a slight points increase, and I think they're all still quite playable. And I think it's testament to how well balanced the game does feel at the moment. So yeah, just good times. Um, in the comment section below, everyone, let me know what you think of all of this. Um, if there's any sort of builds you think that is now viable, let me know as well, because I'm mainly a player that plays predominantly scum, but I don't sort of experiment a lot with the other factions. So if you think I've missed something, let me know. In the meantime, don't forget to like and subscribe, hit the little bell icon, all that kind of stuff. All my social media information, as well as information on my Patreon is down in the description below. So if you want to be involved with any of that, just head right down there. And in the meantime, I will catch you all in the next video.